dextromethorphan, or DXM for short, is an NMDA receptor antagonist, or more simply put, a dissociative type drug. It has a lot of medicinal properties, mainly as an antitussive or cough suppressant drug that replaces the codeine cough syrup that used to be sold over the counter, as it's a lot less physically addicting and supposedly was intended to curb cough syrup abuse. Though DXM has a lot of psychoactive, hallucinogenic, and anesthetic properties associated to it. You can't make an effective antitussive without a narcoleptic anesthetic like codeine, or in this case, DXM, speaking in the sense that it chemically blocks your cell's response to pain and irritation. But getting back on track, DXM is somewhat commonly used recreationally by many people, one of them being me, uh, more than I like to admit. DXM is another one of those drugs that most people deem to be something rebellious middle schoolers do a couple times, though that does not disregard the intensity of the drug in high doses. One of my most intense experiences of joy and wonder have been on it. My most memorable one being with a friend, who I'll nickname Joe for privacy's sake. We were, well, rebellious high schoolers. Though Joe didn't start with weed, he started with the syrup. Somehow I convinced him with it first because it wasn't illegal to own. Anyway, it was probably our second or third trip together that was the most memorable. Again, this happened a good seven or eight years ago, so the story may sound a bit incoherent. Me and Joe were hanging out for the night and wanted to have a good time. We had the idea to go to the store and get some sweet toxic syrup, though we could only find Delson, as it was the only pure DXM syrup in the store at the time. I had like $20. We got a bottle and tried to split it between each other. We walked all the way up to the plant, the same one from before, to chug it. It was so dark that we had no clue whether or not it was 50-50. I felt uncertain whether it was enough, so we decided, like most shitty teenagers, to go shoplift another one. I obviously don't condone this, but... Our plan was to create a distraction with one of us so another could take the loot and meet outside. Somehow we both snagged one. We chugged them and went to my place totaling around 1,332 milligrams of DXM polysyrex, which is about equivalent to 666 milligrams of hydrobromide DXM. Hmm. Hmm. Never noticed that. About 30 minutes in, we're watching Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and I'm starting to feel it. Joe is getting pretty queasy. Meatwad's voice is echoing in my brain. After a while, my mom came in to check on us, causing my friend to get some very intense dissociation, probably due to the complete surprise and anxiety. He said that life slowed down and distorted with white and black stars as his head turned to look at my mom. I kept somewhat of a coherent conscious and said, we're just chilling and didn't need anything. Me and Joe think to go outside and walk around, even though it was around 11 p.m. in the middle of winter. Probably around 35 to 40 degrees or so. We couldn't guess though, we were too dissociated to really feel it, though we still wore heavy coats. I go to turn my lights off and notice the distortion of death. I felt like I was close to the light switch, but reaching out to switch it off, my arm extended all the way. The same thing happened to the both of us when we walked outside and looked at the street, which seemed to have doubled in size. Joe proceeded to barf on my neighbor's lawn. Oops. I told him it'll wash away and we kept going on. We take our music and just jam and walk. While walking, I close my eyes to see this vision of me getting trapped in this neon cube. I said to Joe, Dude, I'm in the cube! And Joe is just somewhat oblivious, zoned out into his music. We decide to try and find warmth somewhere. For some reason, we walked into these apartment complexes and just sat in the inside stairway areas, sitting down and just completely zoning out. 
We both start listening to Pendulum and try to sync up our music. It was very euphoric. I had these oral visuals of being in a teal mirror room full of mirror boxes reflecting each other. It has these bismuth crystal stairways spiraling into other rooms. I also saw myself flying in this planet that looked like Piccolo's planet from Dragon Ball Z. Then out of nowhere, we hear a door open. We quickly got up and walked outside, trying to act casual. Tripping on the stairs seemed really fun, so we kept hopping apartments to loiter in. After like the third or fourth time, we give up and decide to walk out to the playground a ways away. Things are in full gear now, we're completely fucking zonked. On the way, we talk to each other periodically in the most playfully childish manner, as if all our social inhibitions have just gone out the window. Though we'd still apologize for the stupidest stuff and forgive each other instantly. I remember us being all, Dude, I, I don't know if you want to, but do you want to go to the playground? Sorry, I, I don't want you to do anything you don't want, I know it's cold out. Dude, no, that sounds awesome! No, don't worry about it, man. Something like that. It, it just felt like being friendly drunk, but with an extra hint of ego softening. We got to the playground about 30 to 40 minutes later. The sky was cloudy and lit up by the city lights. I remember being scared at one moment because Joe wandered off to go play on the swings, which is fucking awesome on Dissociatives, I definitely recommend it. And I thought that the entire night hanging out with Joe was just a delusion, and I just walked out here by myself. Joe yelled at me to come swing. I was relieved and joined him, telling him how scared I was. Swinging on dissociatives is a really weird feeling to describe. You can feel the turbulence, but you can't feel the motion, if that makes sense. Closing my eyes, it felt like I was moving and not moving at the same time. After a while, we decide to go back and try to sleep. Things are kind of blurry at this moment. All I remember is that my music seemed to have been sped up very slightly in tempo. I'd get that when sober, too. I don't know if that's because of my iPod or my imagination. We just kept zoning out, listening to music, until we decided to try and sleep. Next morning, I had the unpleasant surprise of Delsum Shards, because I didn't really throw up the night prior, as opposed to Joe. Is that too much information? <laughs> Sorry. Just a fair warning. If you do Delsum, watch out. It'll sneak up on you. The rest of the day was a complete afterbuzz. There wasn't much of a calm down, if any, at least on my side of things. This was one of our most memorable trips, braving the cold, taking a trip while tripping around town, loitering inside apartment complexes, playing on the playground past midnight, and having the best time of our lives doing it all. Disregarding the nausea and vomiting and diarrhea, I found DXM to be almost entheogenic in a way, as crazy as that sounds. This is totally one of those finding peace in the desert type experiences, only in the cold. I wouldn't call this a party drug by any means. I guess you could, though I have actually been on it at a party, and it completely disconnects you from everyone who's not on DXN. To the ones who are, though, you'll make the greatest of friendships. And as for the obligatory health warnings, uh, DXM shouldn't be used recreationally by children or the elderly. Anyone taking SSRI antidepressants on it have a higher chance of getting serotonin syndrome, which can be fatal. DXM shouldn't be mixed with alcohol or opiates in high doses, as there is increased hepatotoxicity to the liver, and it can also increase the chance of respiratory depression. Taking stimulants on DXM can drastically increase heart rate and can possibly cause arrhythmia. There's cross-potentation of DXM combined with cannabinoids, deliriants, and more dangerously, alcohol and opiates. There have been studies on DXM causing Olney's lesions, which I guess you can call cuts in the brain, simply put. 
though the studies have been reviewed and revised, so I don't really know the validity of the claim, though dissociatives have been known to cause Olney's lesions before. As always, take it at your own risk. Uh, I, I don't really know how to end this video. Sorry if I sound a little bit sick. I've been getting over a head cold. I'm kind of contemplating whether or not to keep doing drawings for these videos. Uh, let me know what you think. Until next time, stay safe, good luck, and goodbye.